Hello, hello, if you're new, my name is Vanessa Woods. If not, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to make a video talking about what I wish I knew before I joined or started nuclear medicine. Um, or, you know, maybe it was something that I was told that I feel like it's worth passing down. The very first thing I wanted to go over was the difference between having an associates and a bachelor's in nuclear medicine. Um, I have an associates in nuclear medicine. And when I did research to kind of decide that, oh, that's fine, um, was that I found out most places don't weigh a bachelor's heavier than an associates. It's the nuclear medicine certification that they're more worried about. One doesn't get paid more than the other. So I really didn't see what the benefit was of spending two more years in school. For the same degree pretty much but looking back now i do wish that i did the bachelor's route because there are so many other doors that can be open with having a bachelor's degree that an associates you can't get into so one thing that i was told that i feel is so important that i'm going to repeat it is if possible do not have a full-time job while you're in the program um i know it's tough but if you can be supported by someone or um, like for me, I lived with my parents. I would say, you know, like a part-time job is okay, but even, even like a nightly job, it's a lot. The program is intense and there's no way around that. It's time consuming because not only do you have to be at clinic and also at class, but really when you're not in either, you should be studying. So with that being said, I kind of wish someone would have, um, really given us a good idea about how much free time we wouldn't have. <laughs> I feel like it's a good idea to go ahead and warn your friends and your family, like, look, hey, during this year, while I'm in this program, it's, it's gonna be super tough. Um, it's really important that I do well and I graduate. And so that means I'm gonna have to say no to some parties. That means I'm gonna have to miss some family events. like. There's going to be a lot that you're going to have to say, no, I'm sorry, I have a test tomorrow. Nope, sorry, I have clinic in the morning. Nope, sorry, I got to study. I got to go. So I remember doing that a lot. Not saying that you won't be able to do absolutely anything, um, but you won't have much free time. And if you do have a lot of free time, you're not doing too good in the program. That's just how it's going to go. Okay, so here's another thing I wish I was told. The minute you finish all of your prerequisite courses to the point where you're ready to get into the nuclear medicine program, it's been a while since you've had anatomy and physiology. Because um, normally that's towards the beginning of, you know, like your pre-med semesters. So I would suggest brushing up on anatomy and physiology, even if it's like just looking at your old notes or flipping through your textbooks and just trying to remember as much as you can. Just a, a teeny tiny bit of a brush up because there's no like warm up. You're gonna be responsible for trying to brush up on all of the information, the literal prerequisites for the course. So do your own little brush up. Um, I would say the same thing for algebra. You wanna brush up on your math because you're not gonna, again, start at the basics like PEMDAS. What is PEMDAS? Parentheses. What is E? I really, I, I do not know what E is, PEMDAS. Parentheses, something, multiplication, division, add, subtract. What is E? Anyways brush up on your algebra. This is another thing that I noticed like early into the program. Um, I didn't know how to study. I realized that I never really had to study, study for anything, anything in school um, up until the nuclear medicine program. The type of studying I was doing was just like memorizing it real quick on the back of a flashcard. And that just did, that wasn't working in the beginning for me with nuclear medicine. I was not doing that great. And I just could not figure out what I was doing wrong or what I needed to do. And I actually went to a counselor um, and he has this whole like scientifically proven method on how you should study. And I went and I saw him and what he told me to do was, okay, so you've got the chapter that you're reading read it all the way through, don't take any notes, just read. 
Now go back when you're done. Now read all the way through again. And while you're reading, write down every question you could possibly think someone could give you while you're reading. And I mean, I, like have a list of questions. And then go all the way through, finish all your questions, go back through, and now read it and answer your questions. So now you have your questions and these answers and you can study these questions that you've written for yourself and it's just really important you write good questions. You don't wanna write a stupid question. It's very time consuming, very time consuming because it's reading, 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 writing, writing, <laughs> reading some more, but it worked for me. It really worked for me. I mean, I saw an immediate difference the very first time I tried that method. And I wish I, because I'm pretty sure that method has a name in everything. Um, I wish I knew the name of that method. Another thing I would suggest, make sure you keep all of your textbooks. Don't try and get out of the program and say, yeah, I'm gonna sell all my textbooks. First of all, you'll probably get like $5 for them. We all know how that works. Hold on to your textbooks. I still look at my textbooks at work. Um, a lot of times there's gonna be a test that comes across that you just don't do that often, or you have literally never seen, not even as a student, it's just that rare, but it's in your textbook and you've got something you can look up. Shoot, I would keep everything. I still have all of my notes. I still have all of my PowerPoints and stuff like that. And I'm glad, I'm glad I do because I do reference them enough where I'm happy I, I still have them. I have a really good one and you're welcome. Like you are welcome because I did not do this and I wish I did. Keep a list of all of the different camera systems that you're using at your different clinical sites write down the name of their PAC system, um, write down the name of their EHR systems, uh, because you want to write all of that down on your resume. And it's really important that you remember what you used. Um, a lot of jobs will ask you specifically, like, do you have experience on ADAC systems? Or do you have experience with Siemens? Or do you have experience with Meditech? And to be able to write that on your resume, it just immediately, they're like, oh, okay, well, she'll be comfortable with that. That's one less thing we have to focus on trying to teach her. So um, keep, make a list and keep that list so that you can fill in your resume later when you finish. You're welcome. You are welcome. We did always say this, and I agree with this. Um, when you're at clinic, it's basically a job interview every day, over and over and over. Um, that's how you should take it. But what I would suggest is make those connections, like make those connections with the technologists, make those connections with uh, the lead tech of the department, like make connections because at the end of the day, it may just depend on who you know on when you get your first job. Uh, that's kind of what happened for me. It really just comes down to who you know a lot of times. So just make those connections. And then when you are leaving a clinical site, ask them to write a letter of recommendation for you and start applying for jobs early. I didn't do this. I think I, I felt like I have to wait until I graduated. I felt like I was lying to everybody to go ahead and apply for positions I'm not qualified for yet. Apply, apply early. Um, I would start maybe like two, three months before your graduation. And if you do get a call and they're like, oh, you haven't graduated yet, it's like, no, but um, you're on their radar and you can tell them exactly when you will graduate and exactly what day you'll be available and they're not gonna forget about you. So just trying to keep this as short and sweet as possible. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. Um, I do love the feedback that I get. So I do go through all of my comments and read them. I read DMs on Instagram that I get, I, all of that. So if you really have any type of question or any type of suggestion for my next video, um, tell me, let me know. So I know that I'm putting out some stuff that you guys actually find useful. Um, but anyways, I hope y'all are doing okay, even during this quarantine period. Um, please be careful, please be safe, and thank you.